All right. So with us today, John Dowling, <laughs> welcome to the broadcast today. We're so blessed to have you on. Thanks. Thanks for having me, guys. Really appreciate this opportunity. God is so good. Hey, you know, there is the so much going on in the arena uh, at the world um, uh, platform. And, um, you know, it, and there's so much that you can, uh, I really believe that's why you're on the show with us today, is to impart into those that really haven't um, learned much about um, the global reset. Um, you know, what, what does it mean? Um, how can they get involved? Um, so there's a whole lot of questions there. And, and what about the other countries as well? You know, how are they involved? Because we're hearing a lot, John, about the global reset. And, um, you, you know, there's, there's several differences there from what we're really talking about um, from the global elitist, uh, you know, reset that they want to push on people. So would you like start with that? You know, what is the difference? Sure. Well, first of all, thanks again for having me and 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 for your cogent audience for listening in and, and doing their diligence as well. <clears throat> it's pretty simple, really. There's <clears throat> there's really uh, in a lot of my discussions, if you've heard, I talk about parallel economies, parallel presidencies, good and evil has its own parallel. So start with that component. There's the Great Reset, which is run by the Cabal, the Illuminati, and George Soros, and the World Economic Forum, the International Monetary Fund, the BIS Bank of International Settlements, and the, the UN. They are all basically spokes of the same wheel. And they, basically, they're, they've been trying to push for decades what they call the, uh, the Great Reset, or Agenda 2030, which is basically digital economy, uh, you know, central bank digital currency, you'll own nothing and be happy. And it, it's just, it's it's a one world currency. It's been going on for a long time. It's just now it's reaching front of face for the mainstream of society in the last few years. So that's the demonic agenda. <clears throat> the global reset, or what I call the godly reset, is what, <laughs> what, we're, what we're striving towards, which is uh, gold and silver backed, asset backed currencies, precious metals, and everything to do with that specific cryptos, which we'll touch on in a bit, um, you know, oil stocks, specific oil stocks, not just like mobile and Exxon and those, but other ones we'll also touch on specific exotic bonds, which we'll also touch on. All of these are comprised around God's money, Haggai 2, 8, the gold and silver are mine, like we talked about on Sunday, which is really gold and silver, platinum, palladium, copper, and several other precious minerals that God made since the beginning of time. So we're going back to a decentralized economy where countries can be free of the deep state dollar, free of the globalist agenda, mostly free from Satan's henchmen and minions control and uh, subjugation over the entirety of the world. It's, it's in parlance, it's an East-West reset. So the wealth of the West, meaning U.S., Canada, et cetera. Uh, and even England, uh, most of Europe, is being fleeced away, and all these nations are uh, de-dollarizing, as we're seeing, and saying, no, I'm not right. doing it anymore. We're going to back our currency in whatever we grow in the ground, produce, metals, uh, plutonium, what have you. And that's the godly reset where, uh, as Kim Clement said, when things seem at their worst, I will free my people. And we're, mm. we're starting... We've been in process for a while, but in 2024 now, I can say with pretty good confidence, we're at the tipping point as to where the wheat and the tares will separate. So that's the, the genesis of the difference between the two. So in order for this uh, global reset to happen, does the, um, uh, the currency, the fiat currency have to tank um, before that happens or can that happen anytime? Well, it's important. It's important, Francine. We first of all do know since we're on, we're talking on a skeletal level of defining things. Right. We've already been in the reset for a little bit. We're just taking the next step now. We're we're in we're bottom of the first, top of the second now. Phase two with the currencies. So just an important point to make as a demarcation. But to your question, we have to see the U.S. dollar uh, push back on the index. It has it's like a dance floor. It has to come off the dance floor to make space for these other currencies to come in. We're not going to see the dollar completely go to zero, but we will see 
uh, I would say 50 cents on the dollar. It'll be, it'll be a major correction, which will be more. We only really need 30 per, 25 to 30% would do it, but we're going to see, I think in the next, we'll be conservative and say 12 months, we're going to see uh, uh, the dollar take a 50% haircut um, because it's not backed by anything. Our right. strength used to be uh, in the fact that we could subjugate the world with the fiat dollar and our military. And neither one of those has any power anymore, which once again is why the rest of the world is pulling away from the U.S. dollar and America as a whole. Yeah, right. I know that Iraq just, uh, I mean, totally switched over to the BRICS on January mm -hmm. 1st. And that's a huge move, isn't it? Well, they 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 haven't fully they haven't fully been adopted into BRICS yet, but they're headed that way. Iran has been. We'll touch on that in a minute. Okay, but what yeah. they did say is, yes, as of January 1st, no dollars in and out of country. So if you're a businessman and you've been established, if you got dollars in before January 1st, you can probably get those out. But any new business ventures, any new opportunities, totally done. And same with Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia really put their their tent in, in the sand or the flagpole in the sand, if you will, and said, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we're, we're going with the uh, petro yuan. We're done with the petrodollar. So yeah, both of those, those countries are certainly um, in, in the realm of the BRICS or, or already established, but yeah, both, both have, have made a decisive move in that, in that area. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm kind of taking over the floor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of like that evangelist, uh, you know, type thing, give me the mic, you know, and they're trying to pull it away from me, but <laughs> um. Uh, so where does that leave uh, the United States of America? In terms of? Well, in know, regards I to, I mean, because we're we're not backed by gold and silver yet. So, I mean, what, what happens to our monetary system? It's, it's going to change. I mean, it's going to have to change. It's going to, it's going to have to break down and then be rebuilt. They, they've got a parallel system in place for that to happen. But again, as as Trump said, as Q has said, USA will be the US will be last, right? With I mean, you're already seeing debt forgiveness happen throughout the world. The US will be the last in the in that phase. Likewise for the the transition. We're going to see, um, I don't know if it'll be a full economic crash of the of the stock market this year, mm -hmm. but it would not surprise me to see um 25 to and I'm being I'm giving a broad range, 25 to 45 percent uh massive pullback on the market um we're going to see the dollar like i said go to about 50 cents um we're going to see um and this isn't to be doom and gloom i'm just trying to answer sure. your questions honestly as i can we're going to see a lot of layoffs mm -hmm. uh we're going to see uh the commercial real estate market here in california is already imploded and it always starts here you're going to see the housing market take take a major bath um People are not buying new homes. They're not buying existing homes. So why would they buy new homes? So the great, the, the it sounds like a bad thing, but for those who are prepared, which should be your audience, for the one percent, which is roughly, here's how I look at it: one um, percent of our population knows about this. Sounds like the Great Depression, doesn't it? Right. Because it historical replication, it kind of is. Right. I would say, out of that one percent, one tenth of one percent is prepared to laterally move when the wealth comes in to go out and position themselves with land, with metals, with weapons, if necessary, heirloom seeds, growing your own food, becoming, my goal is to help God's giving people cross a finish line. In order to do that, we have to understand how things work and fully capitalize on the, the opportunities God's giving us, right? So that's what we're here to do in a continuation of meetings is to, you know, put those puzzle pieces together. But yeah, the U.S., this is going to be a very dark time for the world and for the U.S. right now, which is why I wanted to be on your show, because I want God's giving people to be the light in the darkness, mm -hmm. right? If you picture a concert, pitch dark, the lights go down, everybody's phones go on, you know, flashlight, or in the old days, the, the, the lighter, you know, and for like the ballad, light in the darkness. That's what we must be in this time for our neighbors, for our friends, for our families, so the U.S. is going to be in a very vulnerable place for a little while, but it will rebound, and we will be part of the catalyst for that change and rebound. Amen. Amen. John, God has given you uh, Joseph anointing uh, to help prepare the people for the years of plenty and years of lack. 
Could you mm-hmm. go into a little bit about how you, how I guess how you were anointed with that, or what God has shown you to help the people? Because you, we were talking about it before. Last, I think the other night, um, how people are gonna, a lot of people are gonna lose all their wealth. They're just mm-hmm. not prepared. Yeah. Um, so as to the anointing, I don't, I don't typically talk about it, but this is a this is a specialized show. So uh, I'll make an exception for this. So when I was born, my my parents gave me the middle name Joseph. Uh, they denoted it after my grandfather. That's who they thought they were doing it in homage to. And, and in part they were. But I think as part of a bigger equation, um, really that name became significant for me, you know, for this time. Uh, and as I told you both, I think the channel that we have going uh, with my business partner, Chris, is part of a bigger arrangement. We're, we're sort of a um, limited edition or a while supplies last type of uh, channel for this season. This is this is what this opportunity God has used to create for to get a platform for this time and place. So you know the Joseph anointing. I, I kind of always had these very vivid visions and dreams as a kid that nobody could understand. I couldn't tell anybody about it. If I did, they thought I was weird or. They, it, it, it was always sort of judged for it. I would share things with my cousins like, hey, I, guys, I see this and this happening. And they, they didn't know what I was talking about. They tend to ostracize me. And, and, and so it, it wasn't something I was comfortable with as a kid. I, understood, I, didn't, I didn't understand the full impact of it, but I understood that there was a gift. There was something unusual that God gave me. But it's just like anything else, it needs to be honed and matured and like our faith over over a you know a prolonged period of time. Uh, it wasn't until you know my 20s um, when I had graduated college and went back home to save money and my parents approached me and they said, we it's just as an, as an anecdote, you know we want to um, we want to send you to Tennessee for a year. We'll pay for it to get you started in your journey in music. And I was really, you know Nash, uh, Franklin Nashville has been on my heart as you know for some time. Um, so as a, a, you know, 23, 24 year old kid, this was very enticing. Um, but I said, I need to go pray about it. Right. And I sat on my hill in my hometown that overlooked the cliffs and the mountainside. It's very beautiful pastoral area. And I, I just sat and I asked the Holy spirit, what do I do? What do I do? I, you know, I don't know what to do here. And I just like sat there for like, <laughs> not like Moses or anything like that for, you know, a prolonged period of time, but you know, for, for a young kid, three days is a fairly significant amount of time. And the Holy Spirit just said, right place, wrong time, you know, and I just had to trust that. And, and it was, Na- Nashville was, is a great city, was a great city. But at that time in the late nineties, you know, it was primarily Christian and country, which is fine, but it hadn't really reached its spectrum of diversity in terms of pop and adult contemporary and other things until the, for the last, you know, 10, 15 years, it's really started to hit its you know, plateau with that and, and really be, you know, arguably one of, if not the music, the new music mecca for America. So those were just, just one small sample, uh, Alan, of an example of, um, you know, the Joseph anointing. Um, I had been around finances most of my life. My, my parents owned businesses. My dad was an executive at Hammer Mill Paper. Uh, so one way or another, I was always around business and finance along with the music. So that was kind of the impetus as to why I had a dual degree at Berkeley with performance and music business management, because I wanted to make a really good living at the talents he gave me so that I could leverage. If I knew the business structure, I would be less likely to be taken advantage of. I'd empower myself with knowledge and put myself in a more winning position to get better opportunities to, to you know, have more fun, uh, uh, to you know, be blessed and to bless people in the process. So Along the way of my life, I think I saw vignettes of these different anointings. Um, I'm not sure where that full mo- full moment came of, of Joseph, but I saw, like I said, little clues and examples here. Um, as it, but it, that's also sort of the two worlds between music and business merged, um, you know, on the financial component. Uh, let's see, as far as this movement goes with the wealth transfer, uh, I was meeting with uh, different investors. <clears throat> angel investors primarily, because venture capitalists tend to look at solely the bottom line and they're looking at corporations versus single entities or individuals. Angel investors typically are also wealthy investors who might want to take more of a flight of fancy on an entertainer, an artist, an actor, an actress, 
uh, and they want to live vicariously through you, kind of bragging rights. So they'll, they'll, they, they have money, they can take a chance. If it doesn't work out, they could just write it off. Right. And so it's a very delicate art form to try to you know, bridge the gap between marrying and business and creative, as, as any artist will, will tell you. Uh, but I had an opportunity in 2012 to meet um, an American and an Asian businessman who were starting a music entertainment company. That didn't pan out. And then a year later, I met a Vietnamese gentleman, how appropriate for what we're talking about with the wealth transfer here, as we'll talk about in a minute with the Dong. And, you know, he divulged to me in private that he knew about the Dong, that his family was in government, and that, that, that it was absolutely going to prosper, but it was going to take several years beyond what I thought. And then you're talking 2014. So at that point, I was about a year and a half into the wealth transfer in terms of, you know, being an active investor and starting to um, vie for what God showed me. Because, you know, as I told you both offline, um, you know, I almost got signed by a major label in 07, met the owner of that label which was one of the most demonic entities I'd ever met in my life. It was chilling. And, and God showed me years later, Alan, as a Joseph example in 2019, before the pandemic, hey, I want you to do this with my money, not the devil's money. That's why I didn't let you have that. I was protecting you. I started to realize that every setback was a setup for something much greater, that everything that seemed like a disappointment to the world was actually a promotion from the Lord. We, it's imperative that we have all of us here in the meeting and those listening have a long range view of your lives, of your salvation and of this wealth transfer. Don't just be in a hurry to get the hit and take off. You know, it's going to be like uh, checkers, right? When your kids play checkers, you move from one piece to the next, to the next, and you're, you're moving expeditiously across the board to get to the end game, but you're stacking as you go. I, I think that's a fairly appropriate analogy for what we're dealing with is, you know, don't just, you know, get the dinar and say, okay, I'm out. I mean, th this wealth transfer is so vast and so deep yeah. and it, it's going to go on for a number of years. If you're not convinced, ask yourself, why did Iraq do a three-year budget? Well, <laughs> two reasons. One, because we're going to see this wealth transfer extenuate over a period of, you know, three, four years. And two, uh, it gives the Iraqi citizens or the residents there three years of peace before the Iranians come back in and take over. So likewise, how does that sound familiar in America? Right. Well, we're, we're, what is what happened with Joseph in Genesis? Seven years of plenty, seven years of famine. Yeah. So to conclude, um, Alan, with your question, I think the basis of it, I feel that one of my roles in moving to Tennessee, other than music, other than meeting my future wife, other than having kids, other than... Uh, you know, being a leader in my church community, Bible study, and all that entails with that is there are some initiatives that I can't talk about here um, online, but that God has called me to, and some of that land will be allocated for storing up the, uh, the storehouses of treasure over the next six years, you know, before 2030 hits, because we're going to need, it, it's not an option. We as Christians must be our own central bank you must own, I don't care if it's one acre or 10,000 acres, we mm -hmm. must own land. You must be self-sufficient as much as possible. And that's why God's giving us this wealth. So we can focus on what he's got us to do with the talents he's imbued us and not be beholden to the government, be beholden to the central bank, be beholden mm -hmm. to the old status quo. We, we must separate as the wheat from the tares right now in this season. And so that's why I say we, I say we have about three to four years of this wealth transfer extenuating out because you have 209 countries. I know some people think, oh, it's all going to happen at once. Well, first of all, that's not going to happen. That would be insider trading, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, more importantly, I believe that God knows that not everybody is at the same commensurate level. Some people don't even know what the dinar is. Some people are new to this, right? And so some people are going to miss out on the dinar or the dong or the zim or other things. And so he's going to give his people, just like salvation, as many opportunities to jump in at this wealth transfer, whatever, whatever um, uh, we'll call it financial puberty state uh, you might be in, and, and take advantage of wherever you land and move along the pieces until such time as God says enough. And, and that's when you need to be using your talents uh, for when the famine comes and, and just be ready for his inevitable return.
So I know it's a long answer, but there's a lot oh, inside. Well, I wanted, being the first time on the show, I wanted people to get a base to understand yeah, where you're coming from. Okay, sure. Yeah. That's really, really good. And I love what you said. Um, you know, when when these funds come, the whole purpose of this is is not to, wow, I'm getting a new house, a new car, and and I'm just going to spend like crazy. No, I believe God has given us this financial blessing to be a blessing to others, you know, to to help like Joseph, you know, I mean, with the with the food and uh, being like, you know, a co-op to where you're able to to share within the community and help medically and, and so forth. I mean, that's what it's it's all about. Wouldn't you say? Oh, absolutely. And if you don't mind, Francine, I just want to interject two uh, addendum points to what you just said. Um, I don't think God is against us having nice things, but it's it's what where does when when he gives us fertile seed, are we planting it on fertile soil or is it on barren ground? Where does the seed die with us or, or how far does it extenuate? Right. Um, it's just like the the uh, the old airplane adage. Right. In the event of a, a crash, you know, the put your mask on before you put on somebody else's. Right. And if you're dead and I'm going to be able to help your neighbor. So you've got to get yourself in a good position, getting out of debt, um, getting, you know, like I said, get, like getting land, getting reliable transportation, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's not, you know, if you want to have a nice car, that's fine. But remember, um, humility and being understated, which I'm sure the majority of your audience understands, is paramount because, you, because you're drawing attention to yourself, right? You don't need to draw people's attention to the fact that you've come into stuff because it makes you a target. You know, so that being said, God is not against you having some form of opulence. It's just that can't be where it ends. There has to be, uh, that's a leaping, you know, post, right? And uh, there was a second point that you made. Uh, can you just repeat that again, please? The last point. <laughs> um, that it's basically uh, um, to be used, you know, for those times of famine to where we're able to, um, you know, uh, help a, our community. And, it's a harvest field. Yes. It, right. it's, a harvest, it, it's, you know, you get more with honey than you do with vinegar. Right. So if you have something yeah. to, you know, bless the people with, they're more likely to be open to hear what you have to say about the gospel especially well yeah i mean because that's that thank you for that yeah because this is this is to me this is a two-part thing right it's like two sides of your brain one yeah. side is the financial but the financial portal opens up what we're here for which is the harvest of souls because as we talked about offline the other night people are going to be losing you asked about the state of america it's going to be a total fleecing of the old ideological mentality of my car, my house, my wife, my husband, my job title, my address defines who I am. No, no, no. Your heart, your submission, your talents, not of your natural mind, but that God imbued you from birth, right? Because we're not here to pay bills and die. I guarantee you that's not why, that was not part of the plan. <laughs> that's the that. mind washing and brain control of the yeah. enemy to get people bogged down in fear. That's why the church is struggling because so many churches are not teaching that they're saying, oh, money is evil. No, it's not. The right. idolization of anything above God, your wife, your kids, that's idolatry if it goes ahead of God. God's not against money. He made it. God's not against sex. He made it. It's what's the purpose of it. Why? How are we using it, right? So one of the things I always talk to my friend John G., a fellow Joseph, about is you know, Matthew 7, 6. I had to learn that lesson, folks, over the last 10, 11 years, reinforced time and again. Do not cast pearls before swine. Why? Because it will trample your feet like pigs. Be discerning about who you share this with. This isn't a Sunday dinner table conversation with your family unless they're completely on board with you and they're on the same path, which as far as I can ascertain, most are not. Certainly not in my case. Right. I mean, my mother is, but the rest of my family, you know, they're or sheets to the wind somewhere with that they just they think whatever they see on the television is the truth and nothing right. to see here you know right. just you know and and that's why i said this will be the year of uh, uh of shock and awe vindication weep from the tears the impossible will meet be, be made possible by our lord as always um but uh yeah be discerning about who you talk to this about who you share this with and to what degree because it's in the beginning, when I started this, I was real gung ho to share it, just like the gospel, right? I, and it was good and well intentioned, but you know, I got 
run through like a bus saw. You're crazy. You're a conspiracy theorist. That would never happen. The dollar's never going to fail. Blah, 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 blah. People have been in this system for, we, we haven't been, by the way, side note, but connected. We haven't, we're, we're not a democracy. We're a constitutional republic. Most Amen. people don't even know that. Maybe I'm sure a lot of your listeners do, but the whole of society, 99% doesn't realize that. So we haven't really been free since 1871, mm. since Ulysses S. Grant, right? right? Or right. it changed over, right? We've still yeah. been on the British system, just like Canada, just like many other countries have been enslaved. So you're talking about a wholesale separation. This is going to take time, the wealth transfer. It's going to take time, the cleanup, the awakening process for people to realize people in, in general, are very prideful. They don't want to admit they were wrong because if 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 you chip away at, at an undercoating of their of their reality and that starts to flick away, what else is behind that? And then it involves change involves work. And those who are willing to do the work, those who are willing to sacrifice, be patient, put in the time, and persist in in what God has them to do will be exceedingly and abundantly rewarded, Ephesians 3, 20, 21. But anyway, that's, that's my response to your last question. Yeah. No.